Hello, and welcome to my Rally 235 final project. This project is going to be presented through the video game called Minecraft. In this sandbox, I have the freedom to create and survive in the world I create. With this in mind, I have created different builds in different styles, and I'll discuss their connection to the class. Before I get started, I would like to thank you, Isaiah, for giving me the opportunity to do this unconventional project, and for your hard work and dedication to the class. Even though our semester was interrupted, you still made the class enjoyable and interesting, and I thank you for that. Also, I appreciate your help in helping me change the way I look at the world, and I have truly had a deeper connection with it. However, let's get into the project. And again, this is very unique for me. I never thought I'd be doing this in college, but thank you again. So let's hop on the rail to the first building of the project. And I have devised this nifty railway system to get us to get us to the different buildings, which looks neat. So, I would like to welcome you to the Southern Bell. I named it so because you would probably find this style of church in the southern United States. These churches are traditional in the South and are usually in the neoclassical style. Some of my inspiration for the design of the church would be the First Baptist or Trinity United Methodist Church in Kannapolis, North Carolina, my hometown. Looking at the exterior, the church has a tall steeple slash bell tower with a cross as a finial. The finial and the exterior are illuminated to provide dynamic lighting during the night to illuminate the church as a place of light. The church is composed of mostly brick with a front colonnade of white pillars. The exterior of the building is lined with bushes and includes a picnic area with seating and tables. Also, a playable basketball court is included. So I'm going to go over here and see if I can get one in. Kobe. Oh, look at that. Perfect. And so, you can play basketball, picnic, have a good time with family here, which I'll touch on in another point with this building. Heading inside, we walk through the arched doorway into the nave of the church. The church is decorated with chandeliers, carpet, pews, and stained glass windows. The windows have depictions of Jesus through these patterns. The ceiling is vaulted to give the space a greater emphasis on how this sacred space extends into the heavens, as if to invite God into the space. We see that the pastor would stand here at the altar at an elevated position to draw attention to their message. Let's see. And in the side rooms, we have classrooms or, or a space for hangout. As we see this, this building isn't that big. But its significance goes beyond the church and the messages that are given. These churches are usually locations for communities to convene and hold events like, di like dinners, summer camps, school, or other activities that aren't entirely related to church sermons. My personal experience comes from, from me attending the Boy Scouts. And so now, we're going to go on. Moving on, let's hop on the rail and pretend that somehow we can cross the Atlantic Ocean by rail. And we are going over to Europe. Next up, we are coming up to Mort's Cathedral. The name of this building is actually based on my pledge name when I was pledging my fraternity at UNC. I was Mort. Some of the design element was inspired by my fraternity since some of my brothers love Minecraft too. And this can be seen in the blue and yellow stained glass as this is my fraternity's color. This building is also inspired by the various Gothic cathedrals that I saw when I went to Europe, like Notre Dame, the Bayeux Cathedral in France, and the Cologne Cathedral in Germany. It features pointed Gothic arches with crosses, and some are adorned with statues, as we see here. Around the exterior, the, build, the building is constructed of stone bricks and unpolished diorite. The exterior also features decorative buttresses and stained glass. Also, this build was one of my longest, and it would have taken me 600 years to build, to build like some real cathedrals. However, I learned Minecraft code to finish it. Anyhow, approaching the entrance, we are greeted by large wooden doors with golden knobs. Once entering the nave, we see the rows of pews enclosed in two design colonnades. This creates the effect that all the importance and source of sacredness is derived from the spot where the priest would deliver his sermon. The ceiling is greatly vaulted 
to not only amplify the sacredness of the space, but to also display the prowess of the church. These cathedrals are usually built under the authority of the Pope, and these or ornate and grand buildings show off the power and significance of the church. Heading back to the interior design, the altar is adorned with a cross in the middle and some sort of a tableau. Again, the altar is elevated to overlook the pews. However, some of the sacredness of the building comes from the other functions of the church. Usually, these churches would house art, as seen here. Very nice Minecraft art that I think would fit very nicely. And also, and also would house artifacts and other items that would make this these places sacred. So here we have a cross, um, sort of ambiguous artifacts, and over there is a confession booth. Overall, I enjoyed this build a lot because I had fun with the fraternity influence in my European experiences. Some of the sacredness come from these memories associated with Europe and UNC, which are some of the best times of my life, I would say. And here I took some creative liberties with the with the idea of a sort of the secret club, like my fraternity. However, my fraternity is in secret. So moving on to the third building, uh, we're gonna get our minecart here. Give it a little push and go. Um, this piece is called the Craft Arena, presented by Microsoft. This is a play on the fact that Microsoft owns Minecraft. As the name suggests, it is an arena where you can play a Minecraft mini game called Spleef. In this game, you try to break the blocks underneath the player and try to make them fall. Last Man Standing lives, and this game has been around since the early days of Minecraft. I wanted to incorporate the modernist styles that we learned with a Minecraft specific element. Also, did we really learn something in your class if we don't mention modernism? The exterior of the building is relatively simple with its international blocky style. Also, the building is built with clean looking quartz, glass, and accented with teal prismarine blocks. This lack of ornate blocks harks back to the ideas of Adolf Loof and the second skin. So I was also inspired by the Crystal Palace, and I wanted to include a sort of a fluid motif with this roof here which is the modernist interpretation of the minigame that is played inside. The fluid motion of the design is supposed to represent the motion of players playing the game as they have to be quick and have good reflexes. So heading inside, form fix function. So ticket booth and a food arena are included. Um, who doesn't want to eat um, at a sporting event, you know? There's a little nice um, aquarium here that is also built, but uh, moving on. So. And also, I used the domino style uh, designed by Le Corbusier through the post in the middle of the main room. So this would allow me to create the glass and quartz design on the walls. And so heading upstairs, we see a lounge slash TV area, which are the paintings, which are the TV, sorry. And it has a bar inside. So it's very open. Again, we see Le Corbusier's post allowing for free walls. And so now heading into the arena itself, the, uh, the press box, we see that there's a monitors, computers, and a viewing for the uh, arena so you can broadcast. So now heading into the arena itself, uh, which you would access through these doors, there are seating on both sides with screens on the walls. And the screens are the paintings again. This is where the sacred, where the sacredness and the purpose of the building would be held. Thus, sacredness is created to the players who play, uh, who play, the people who watch, and the hype around the game. By itself, the building is secular, but like the Southern Bell, it is the people who make it sacred. So, we are done with the builds on this world. I was going to include a fourth build, but I found a deeper connection to the class through this game, and I wanted to address it. So, we are going to leave this world and head over to my personal Minecraft world. So we're going to try to get out of here. Oh, oops, I didn't mean to click on this world again. It's sort of a force of habit. So we're going to go to the correct world this time. Let it load, let it load, good. Now that we are here, I wanted to include this in the project because this game and world represents how the sacred can be manifested in various ways to people. Just like that time when we discussed the sacredness and importance of music, the game of Minecraft has that effect on me. Here, I am free to build, explore, and uh, express my true creative mind. All that you see here is influenced by my life, um, as seen through this flags of the U.S., 
and C, my fraternity and this and UNC through this tar field, this tar heel flag. As you see, this world is uniquely mine and thus sacred to me. It can be my escape from reality or just a way to spend and enjoy time. Even through the mundane acts like fishing or mining, I pour work into this into this world because it means something to me. I create its sacredness. I would even dare to say that the modernist ideal that spirituality comes from within a person is represented in this game. Minecraft is only the blank space that you are given. Its blocks and pixels may be just that, but it is the drive, but it is what drives the person to project their creativity, thought, and inspiration. Through this, they can create a spiritual understanding of the world and thus make it sacred. For some, it may be a game, but to others, it can represent childhood, fond memories, peace, or community. Thus, the entirety of the game and its world is, sac is sacred space created by you. Well, that is all, and I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this break from papers, and I wish you the best of luck with your PhD. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity and for making Rally 235 one of my favorite courses at UNC so far. Have a great summer, and again, thank you so much.